This will come as a surprise, but uh, to put it bluntly, nobody wants to go to hell. I mean, people want to interpret it. They want to argue about it. They want to deny it. They want to pretend and contend that it doesn't exist, but frankly, when a person knows there is a hell, and that God could send them there, nobody wants to go there. The question and problem they have, usually, is how do you get from point A to point Z <laughs> without doing B, C, D, E, F, G? And that's always a challenge. You know, this is going to come maybe as a, another surprise, but anybody that has come into contact with God doesn't deny there is a God. The problem they have is once they have known there is a God, they didn't like what they found. So often they kind of went off to find their own God and make their own way. So, it's kind of surprising, but uh, the reality of where we are at, according to the book of Romans, is that everyone knows there is a God. And frankly, if I could add this part, everyone knows there is a hell. They really do. Now, you're going to find that most people will talk about there is no God, argue there is no God, debate, contend, pretend there is no God. But the Bible's kind of blunt about it. The scriptures say, everyone knows there is a God. I don't know what to tell you after that. You can argue with the Bible. You can contend with the Bible. You can debate the Bible. You can pretend the Bible doesn't exist. But I think you got a problem. You see, not only does God exist, not only does the Bible exist, but uh, hell exists too. So you know, because we know for a fact that God exists and that the Bible exists, and that hell exists, wouldn't it be kind of the next best conclusion to figure out that what if all these things exist? What can we do about them? How can we deal with it? The reality that we may have gone, you know, spent our life, spent the years of our life, or the days, or the months, hiding from the fact that God exists. But what if now you're finding yourself at the end of your life and you know that God exists but you're just terrified by the idea that maybe, maybe you weren't such a good person after all. Maybe you didn't ask God to be in your life and maybe you don't know Jesus. That's a tough place to be. You know what you can do? One on one. You can talk to God. You really can. You see, Jesus, when he was here, was no different than you and I. He, uh, was the son of man, so he had set aside his deity in some way, somehow, some means we don't know, but he was fully human. And in being that way, he went through the same things that you've gone through. He's experienced everything you've experienced. But you know what he did about it? He would get alone with God, his father, and talk to him about it. 
And you know what God would do? God would meet him alone to talk with him about it. So if we have Jesus as our example, because he is the Son of Man, and he's the Son of God, maybe we can learn from his example and do the same things he did. Maybe we need to spend that one-on-one -on -one time with God. In Streams in the Desert, he went up to a mountain top apart to pray. And when evening was come, he was there alone. Matthew 14, 23. The man, Jesus, felt the need of perfect solitude, himself, alone, entirely by himself, alone with himself. We know how much intercourse with men draws us away from ourselves and exhausts our powers and, frankly, burns us out. The man, Jesus, knew this too and felt the need of being by himself again, of gathering all his powers, of realizing fully his high destiny and his human weakness and his entire dependency upon his Father who was in heaven. How much more does the child of God need this? How much more do you and I? For yourself, for myself, for the child of God himself, to be alone with spiritual realities, to deal with a different set of principles. Himself, yourself, and myself alone with God our Father. If ever there was one who could dispense with special seasons for solitude and fellowship, it was our Lord Jesus. But he could not do this and accomplish his work or maintain his fellowship in full power without his quiet time, his alone time, his time with the Spirit of God revealing not gifts, not worship, but knowing his Father. Would God that every servant of his understood and practiced this blessed art, that the church knew how to train its children into some sense of this high and holy privilege, that every believer may and must have his time when he is indeed himself alone with God. Oh, the thought to have God all alone to himself and to myself and to yourself and to know that God has me all alone to himself. I have taught previously about the intimacy of knowing Jesus on a personal level in a way that a lot of people don't know and that we all should attain to. But one of the things that Jesus made very clear was that there was more to this life of knowing him and that when he sent the Holy Spirit, though it would point towards him, he himself always expressed, revealed, and talked about his Father and pointed us to him that we might know his Father in heaven, that you might be alone with your Father in heaven, who is God. Now you can deny it. You can pretend it doesn't exist. You can contend with thinking you can go on your way and you may have a huge ministry. You may have a little one or none. You may have thousand saints around you to make you feel all their emotion and all their devotion and adoration and they worship you like a god while you stand up in front of the church or they worship God the question is are you getting the backlash from it or are you alone with God and then you come out with the people to share what you have been given from God alone not from yourself question is, how well do you know the Father in heaven? He knows you. There is a heaven. Yep. There's even a man alive that was blessed to go there. Yep. More than one. And they got an opportunity to come back and tell us all about it. Back. 
Now you can deny it. You can pretend that it doesn't exist. You can contend with those that said they've been there. But you know, I think deep down inside, I think the reality is you want to go there for yourself and find out. Why not? What's stopping you? Because if there is something stopping you, you already know what to do about it.